previously when we talked about the phase lock loop uh, we needed a reference carrier uh, back then we were talking about an am signal in which we have a large carrier Beca because of the uh, doppler shift that large carrier may get perturbed and the phase lock loop would then uh, try to track the changes in the carrier and eventually that carrier will be used uh, in the demodulation of an AM signal. Now when we are interested in the demodulation of double side bands breast carrier, there are no spectral line components at FC. By that what we mean is if we plot the spectrum of DSBSC so we do not have significant content on plus FC or minus FC that means the large carrier over here is missing so for such cases the PLL directly cannot be used and hence we have to move towards uh, some alternate methods presently we'll be discussing two of them the first one is the signal squaring method and the second one is cross toss loop right so in the signal squaring method we are uh, having a transmitted signal which we call as S of T yeah, sorry, over here, uh, which is equivalent to AC uh, message signal M of T and then cos omega CT. What we do is we pass it through a squaring device. So whatever is at the input, we will get it at the output. So before over here, if we assuming in time domain, we have a signal which is modulated, something like that. And if we take the Fourier transform, we would have this is FC. Right. So if we have this one, we can observe that it has um, the message signal itself would have low DC content. The message signal may be uh, a person's voice. So it would have a low DC content. But once we square it, all these lower values will be squared and the negative values become positive. So over here, what we would have is we would have a everything which will be moving up right so if everything is moving up so that would mean that we would have significant dc content and if we have if we take the fourier transform of this one we would have something uh over here so uh, let's solve it mathematically before plotting the spectrum. So over here, what we would have is simply S A of T would be A C M square of T by two plus A C square m square of t by 2 cross 2 omega c t right so this would mean that we would have some low frequency content at zero frequency and then we would have some content at 2 fc so what that content would be so this is basically governed by the mess uh, squaring of the message signal m square of t since the message signal is squared over here 
So that would mean that we would have a DC content over which is would be modulated and shifted towards 2xc because m square of t uh, would transfer all the lower values to positive values and then you would have an average value and then once it is modulated you would have you would see the carrier plus there will be some content on the upper and lower side loads as well and over here we would have even symmetry. So this is our S A of T. Now what we need to do next is we need to uh, apply a band pass filter. But before that, let's just simplify further what is uh, this signal. Basically, what we can say is our this part can further be broken down. So let me call it by alpha. So alpha can further be broken down into a c square by two small k plus phi of t cos two omega c t. So this k defines the DC value or the average value and which is basically the spike or the impulse here at 2 fc and phi of t is the upper or lower side loads. So what we are interested in is we are interested in this k or this phi because this is eventually going to give us uh, the reference carrier that we can use later on for the demodulation purpose right so if we pass it through a filter which is tuned to two fc's that's the band pass filter so this term would be cancelled and we would try to cancel this one but at the same time this one would be cost that is k cos to omega c t. So at s v of t, we would simply have a c square by 2 k cos omega c t so we would pass it through our limiter and we'll achieve sc so assuming we pass it through a limiter and eventually we get something like k cos 2 omega c t where we have identified capital k for all of this which is the output of our limiter so this is operating at 2 mega CT, but what we need is uh, a carrier that is basically at omega CT. So we do frequency division and hence we achieve, uh, this is simply SC of T, so we would achieve SD of T that is K cos uh, omega ct right so over here we have ac m of t cos omega ct and now we got k cos omega ct so the output of the uh, multiplier or the phase detector is simply se of t so this se of t is multiplying the two incoming signals such a way uh, that you have AC M of T times let me write K over here cos omega C T whole square so this would be simply K AC by 2 m of t 
1 plus cos 2 omega ct right so this is our se of t so next is we pass it through a low pass filter so after passing it through a low pass filter so the high frequency content would be rejected so simply at the output sf of t we have the messy signal multiplied by some gain g so our output would be directly proportional to the messy signal so that is what we desire gain does not play any role because it satisfies the conditions of distortionless transmission so right now at the very end we would have uh, the output signal demodulated at the receiver now the second method which is uh, used to demodulate uh, double sideband pest carrier signal is proposed by Quastos and it's called Quastos loop so assuming we have again a message signal that we receive that's s sub t which is dsp sc so in Quastos loop we uh, feed this signal to an output of the voltage console, uh, control oscillator in original form as well as in the phase shifted form we use a phase detector couple of phase detectors some low pass filters uh, a narrow band uh, filter and eventually we'll get we get some output so if we synthesize it and see block by block so if we have message signal m of t cos omega c t plus theta i uh, while the output of the vcu is 2 cos omega c t plus theta naught so at c a of t we would have uh, m of t cos omega c t with theta i times cos omega c t theta naught so we would have uh, cos theta i minus theta naught plus cos 2 omega c t um, plus theta i plus theta naught right so this would be over here now in cb because of the low pass filter we will reject this one and over here we would have m of t cos theta i minus theta e let's let me call it as theta e error so straight away you can consider that you would get a message signal if the theta e is zero because cos of zero is one so you will directly get the message signal so this is our major intention to make the error zero and this error can be uh, uh, minimized by mean of the by means of a voltage control oscillator so on the lower thread uh, the vco feeds uh, two cos omega ct plus theta naught but then it's phase shifted so it will become uh, two sine omega ct plus theta naught so over here we would have uh, m of t sine theta e which is theta i minus theta naught plus sine 2 omega c plus theta i plus theta naught and again we will pass it through a low pass filter so this term would be rejected and we would have over here uh, which is ce of t as m of t sine theta e so we have m of t cos theta e over here and on the lower thread we have m of t sine theta e so once we multiply these two we would have m square of t sine 2 theta e so it is interesting that whatever the message signal is so once you square it so the message signal would have again a dc content which we can call as small k and other content which we can call it as phi of t so 
we can break this message signal into two parts and then we would have sine 2 theta e so once we have broken uh, broken down the message signal into its dc content and the other content uh, we can use a low pass filter uh, sorry a narrow band filter to reject this one the upper and lower side loads while we retain k sine 2 theta e so we would have something like k sine 2 theta e over here so this is the input voltage that would be fed to vco but moreover if you are going to plot sine 2 theta e so the plot would be simply theta e versus sine 2 theta e so we would have something like so over a considerable uh, duration there is a linear linearity that can be seen in this graph so based on this linearity uh, we can simply say if the perturbation in phase is quite small we can say simply that we can place sine 2 theta e with just the, uh, theta e right and then that would be something which is fed to the vco and then that vco would eventually drag the incoming signal and we would get the message signal at the output where this theta e would become zero and then cos of zero would become one and then you get the message signal while the squaring method as well as the Frostoff loop uh, performs well for double sideband suppressed carrier demodulation it fails for SSB and VSB because the argument of uh, the function uh, which we eventually get is dependent not only on the incoming carrier but also on the uh, time varying phase.